This is the most simple solution I've found to convert your mechanical brakes on the ZX to hydraulic brakes. Hey, what's going on? In my hand and in this box are some hydraulic brakes that I'm going to be installing on the Super 73 ZX. As you may or may not know, the ZX comes with mechanical brakes and to swap them out to hydraulic brakes, typically what you'd have to do is replace the line, make sure that the brakes you're replacing them with have the electric cutoff for the brakes so when you squeeze them the motor stops and then the uh, you'd have to replace all these lines as well. Um, but with these they actually tie right into the cable and the mineral oil reservoir is in the brakes. So I'm going to open up this box and we'll get these things installed. So I've ordered these off of Amazon and I will have a link in the description down below but i believe the set cost around 50 or 60 dollars but the packaging is simple and let's show you what these brakes look like here so it comes with everything you need to attach the brakes to the frame of your bike i like the red because it matches the tire liner that comes with the launch edition of the zx so that should look pretty cool in there. So installing this should be pretty easy. I believe all the tools you will need are a hex key set, an Allen wrench set, whatever you want to call this. Uh, I think I'll be using the five millimeter on this and then also the pliers on my Skeletool. Both tools, of course, I'll have in the link in the description below as well. So if you need to pick up a set, they'll be down there. So let's see what it'll take to get this thing on the ZX. I'm going to start with the uh, rear brakes first, no particular reason, but with the 5mm hex key we will loosen it up here. Alright, with the bolts out, this should just slide right off your rotor there. And then something that you should do is just screw the bolts lightly back into their holes so you don't lose them. The next thing that we'll want to do is remove the cable from the calipers. So just take your five millimeter and loosen it. This probably would have actually been easier to do while still connected to the bike. And as you can see, it's spring loaded. So that pops the spring off there and then your caliper will slide freely. We do need to remove this cable clamp as well. So you remove the cable clamp just by squeezing on the side that isn't pinched. Um, probably best practice would be to get new cable clamps. You can get them from any bike store, but I think I'll be able to reuse this one. All right, so the old caliper is off. I'm going to install the new caliper onto the rotor. So this comes with a bracket that you probably won't need on your rear brakes. So you can just remove this you know, undo these bolts here, set that aside. And you need to remove this as well. What that does is it keeps the calipers from closing on itself. And if you've bought a new Super 73 and have seen that little plastic piece just set aside, now you know where that comes from. So I'm gonna leave this in here until I'm ready to install this onto the bike. All right, let's put it onto the rotor here. I'm going to take out my bolts, set those aside. I'm going to remove that yellow piece there and slide it right on and then screw in the bolts there. Don't tighten it all the way because we still need to center the caliper, center the brake pads there. So it might be hard to see, but one thing that you'll want to double check is that there is plenty of clearance on the rotors, specifically at the bottom of your brake caliper and the top of the rotor. You can see a slight gap in there, but keep this loose for now. We're going to install the cable and then we can center the brakes. 
If you need to, you can clip this little zip tie right here to help manipulate the cable. But this bolt right here actually has a hole through the center of it that allows you to weave the cable right through. Then this will sit right into this tightener here. And then of course, we're going to clamp the cable using this bolt. This kind of pinches it onto your caliper. And so when you squeeze, it pulls this and that's what actuates the brakes. One thing that you've probably picked up on already is that I'm not a bike mechanic, so I'm not using technical terms. I am just DIY, so do this at your own risk, but it is pretty easy to do. Um, anyway, just wanna throw that out there before I moved any further. Now to get your cable clamped into this spring-loaded arm here, uh, you just loosen this bolt here, lift up on that bracket, and then make sure that the cable is wedged down between this black piece and then the red caliper itself. And then we'll make some adjust adjustments. We'll pull this cable out a little bit and uh, tighten this down. And then to adjust the brakes, you just kind of mess with your brake lever up here and make the necessary adjustments right here. You don't want it too loose. You don't want it too tight. So we'll uh, go ahead and tighten everything up and see how it feels. Oh yeah, and I capped the end with the clamp that came with the cable, just re-squeezed it back onto the end of the cable there. So this is kind of hard to show you with only one hand. One hand's holding the camera, obviously. The other one's holding the brake caliper here. But you'll use your thumb to move this spring-loaded arm up and down the cable. So what I'm going to do is squeeze it so it feels like the brakes are holding the rotor. And then from there, I'm going to tighten this bolt right there and hold it in place. And then we'll make adjustments as necessary. What do you think, Dewey? He likes to watch. Okay, so with the caliper still loose, I'm gonna squeeze this brake handle and then tighten the bolts so that my brake pads are nice and center on the rotors. So I'll tighten the two bolts that fasten this to the bike frame. The caliper is nice and tight. The brake pad should be centered on the rotor here. The nice thing about cable brakes is that there's several spots where you can actually adjust the tension on the brake. So we have this spring-loaded arm here that we can move back and forth and adjust. We can also shorten and lengthen the distance of the cable pull using this, these adjustments here, as well as on the brake arm itself. So I'm gonna store the old brakes and all the parts in the box that the new brakes came in. And in fact, I'm actually gonna use this little key here to hold the brakes in place on the old brakes. And we'll just put these away in my bike part area of my garage, just in case we need it again. So now we'll remove the front brake caliper from the front tire, obviously. This new caliper will sit on here just like that. I don't think we'll need a spacer between the caliper and the bike frame just because this doesn't have one. Uh, one thing I am going to do though that I didn't do on the rear is remove the cable first while the caliper is still tight on the frame. That should be a lot easier. So we've loosened it and we'll remove the end cap. So I've removed the caliper, pretty simple. Uh, something that you wanna keep in mind though is to not touch the rotor with your bare hands. So if you need to use gloves, you can, but just be careful of that because that can cause some squealing with your brakes there. So I'm just screwing in these bolts here so I don't lose them as I prep this caliper for installation. So I'm gonna pull the pin and line up my pads here and screw it in. I'll do the top screw first, kind of hold it in place and then pop in the bottom bolt there. Again, I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down because we will want to make some adjustments so calipers are still loose. So we still have our cable loose here. We're gonna thread it down through this hollow bolt down into this clamp. Uh, 
should be common sense, but make sure that this spring-loaded arm is facing down when you screw it in. So same thing, we're gonna squeeze this front lever here and while squeezing, we'll tighten these bolts, making sure it is nice and centered. The new hydraulic brake calipers are installed and had I not been shooting a video, this would have taken me less than half an hour to swap these out. So let's get a closer look. So the last thing that you'll want to do is take some time, ride the bike around, listen to see if there's any brake noise. Like for instance, I can hear a little bit of rubbing with the front brake pad and caliper, but that should be a quick, easy adjustment. And once you're dialed in, then bed the brakes. And you can look up on YouTube what that means, but essentially you kind of ride fast, then hit the brakes. Don't come to a complete stop and do that about 20 times and that should get your brakes nice and bedded onto your rotors. So now that we have the hydraulic brakes installed, you might be asking why install them in the first place? Well, the short answer is hydraulic brakes do better at faster speeds. It's gonna give you more of a smoother braking experience and they create less friction on the rotors. So the reason why you want hydraulic brakes, short answer, it's just a better braking experience. And with these bikes being able to travel up to speeds, you know, on the ZX like 28 miles an hour, they're a little bit heavier. Um, it's just gonna be a better overall braking experience than the mechanical brakes that come stock on the ZX. So for about 50 or 60 bucks, you're really upping your braking power by installing hydraulic brakes. Anyway, that does it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Will you be installing these on your Super 73 ZX or any other e-bike that has mechanical brakes? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, while you're there, hit that subscribe button. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.